On a sheet of paper, I've drawn a line along the bottom there to represent the footing. That's the part of the building that will go underground. Then above that, there's a ground clearance line. This is the plinth. I've also drawn a center line. For the scale, I've decided to use 1.8 for the person, which is about 5.11. Uh, the figure itself is 2 centimeters. So I've just drawn the height of the figure's head. And then at 2.5, I've drawn a line for the doors and the windows. I've gone up one centimeter to give me the height of the front wall. Now I've got eight centimeters and five centimeters. So five and eight. And that gives me the front, the side, another side, and the back. And you can see this now is the roof line. So for the front and the back, the roof line is drawn in, but for the two sides we need to include the gable end which is going to be the pitch of our roof. So I've started with a center line and I've drawn in two different uh, roof pitches. It's good to use whole numbers or 0.5 numbers for these. Now that there is 2.5 uh, centimeters from the roof line to the center line that's quite a low degree of pitch probably something like 12 certainly less than 20 now I took it to 3 centimeters which gave me something more like a 40 degrees which is quite a good pitch for the roof so now I just need to draw that in and do the same thing for the other side so now I have the roof line complete, both the gables are on, and I need to work out where I'm going to put my door and uh, a window, or windows. So I could have the door in the center there, a window either side, or I could put the door to one side and have one large window. And also the back, if I want to include windows in the back, one on the side there perhaps. I'll think about it. So I've decided where to put the door. Uh, the door should be 900 wide. Now our figure is 1.8 um, and that translates to 2 centimeters so half of the figure, half of 1.8 is 900. So I've gone 1 centimeter from the edge of the building and then 1 centimeter to give me the width of the door. Now I take the door up square to the door and window line as you can see there and I'm marking out where I want my window to go. So I've drawn in two reference points at the top and two at the bottom so I can get a nice straight line when I draw the window in. Now I've taken the window half way down the door line so that gives me a good line to work to for all of the windows. For this model, the, this side and the back will not be visible, so I won't be including any windows or doors in the back. But I will do a window on one side. This is the elevation the building will be viewed from. I'm going to use this front elevation to mark out my roof. I've taken a line up to find the center of my roof, which is going to be the ridge. And then from there, I've marked uh, three centimeters down and three centimeters up. I've just made sure I've got enough room to cut the roof piece out. Uh, the three centimeters each side of the ridge is the same as the uh, the line we drew in earlier. I've also included a slight overhang on both sides. The roof needs to be slightly wider than the width of the building. Now this is only the paper template but I've included these tabs which will allow the whole thing to be wrapped around and put together when I cut it out. 
Now, it's a good idea to copy, which I've done with this. I've scanned this and copied it. And this paper template really is, the idea is that it can be transferred onto card, a plastic card or anything, and then the whole thing can be cut out, like so. So here's the paper copy cut out. The roof you can see there is cut out as well. And now I've folded it and folded the tabs over. And I've used some tacky glue just to adhere that corner and the whole thing is wrapped around. Now I use tacky glue because it it gives a, an instant kind of stick. Now this is the ridge board or ridge beam. You can use something like this uh, round stick which will give you an instant uh, ridge shape. But I've used a popsicle stick that I've cut to measure and that gives me a solid ridge line. Here you can see the roof pieces cut and stuck down with the tacky glue. Now I've kept the roof depth at three centimeters the same as the gable that we measured. The reason for that is that with the inclusion of the ridge beam at the top we've still got an overhang at the front there and as you can see we have the overhang at the sides. So this is where my building is going to go and that's why I haven't included the windows at the back and, the, and that side there. You'll notice that it's not level, it kind of dips down one way or the other and that's the reason for the footing. I can cut the section of the landform out, uh, push the building in and level it up using the footings and keeping my plinth there, the ground clearance line, above the ground. That's the reason for that. So this is the paper template, but as I said before, this can be transferred onto card, plastic card, balsa. I'm going to keep this one uh, in paper, and I'll be cladding this with something different. It's nice and strong with the ridge beam there, so I'm good to go with this one. So just to recap, we're dealing with the relationship between certain things here. So the substructure there, the footings, the ground clearance line, the relationship between the doors and the windows, and the relationship between the roof and the main building. Things like overhangs at the side and the front, uh, getting the gable right. In general, the dimensions of the buildings. Now this is quite a simple structure. It's a single story door, window, uh, quite a simple roof, but you could easily add another story on top, make the roof more interesting, um, make the building longer, add some front additions or some back additions, but for now grab a pen and paper and get building. Most importantly, have fun. <laughs>